What up, what up, what up, YouTube? It's your boy, T. Keys, as always, man in the controls, the baddest DJ in the land, and my lady, Keisha. We are Keys Constrictors. We'd like to wake y'all to another episode of Balls and Things. If this is your first time watching Balls and Things, get y'all perverted minds out the gutter. Pause. We don't talk about those type of balls, nor things. We talk about ball pythons and things, all types of animals, but you know, we only um, mainly talk about ball pythons. That's what we know more about um tonight we got a great guest on here and before we bring that brother out man we need y'all to hit that like button hit that subscribe button bang that notification bell so you get caught up all the things we do with hair you know on fridays we let our hair down with the suspects and all types of guests so uh please 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 let me um say what's up to a few people in this chizzy chat and then um we're gonna do this uh, sponsorship video i Perhaps. Uh, let me see who was up in here first. First, first. I can't see. The computer just runs weird for me. All right. James B, what's good? He thanks for coming out here. My homie Wiz, what up? My ace. Stan, what up, family? Thanks for coming through here. Hey, Nikki. Yes, yes, yes. Thanks. Fred, thanks for coming out here. Benji coming all the way from New Zealand. Appreciate you. James, thanks for popping up. Pink Panther, what it do? My ace is still up in here. Don't leave. Don't leave. Blaker, what up? Yeah, smash that like button. You heard Blaker. Smash the like button. Hit it three times. I'm cool with that. Just only did twice. What up, Rudy? Eric, what up, my bro? V unit. Vinny, what's goody? What's goody, Vinny? You know, I keep it real close. I keep it real close. It's right next to just in case I won't finish that because someone might think I'm serious. <laughs> yeah, what up, Banner? Banner jumped on hair dog on friday it's her first time doing a live but then i seen her making her rounds yeah i saw you last night too banner keep doing your thug this who thomas was goody <laughs> matt's playing double duty he's in the back and he's in the chat yeah love to see it casey what up what up let me get one more babe let me get one more because i think matt's ready to come out he's tired of hearing me talk more minded, yeah. Team try strike. Let's go. Banana Bread Royals breeds with nothing but the best. Their collection is suited for hobbyists and seasoned breeders as well as pet lovers. Their main focus of genetics include DG Clown, Pied, Puzzle, Wookie, Blackhead, and more. They also have incredible merch. Elevate your passion and check them out on Instagram. BNS Reptilia is truly a one stop shop. Check him out for colubrids, boas, bloods, ball pythons, and more. He also services the tri state area with his rat breeding and is a PA distributor for Chipper and Coco to Go. Apocalyptic Morse is a Chicago breeder who focuses on making worlds first by using untapped genes. He also works with the recessives DG Clown, Pied Cryptic, Ultramelon Hypo, to name a few. Check out his living works of art on his Instagram page. Gray Rider Reptiles offers genetic testing on a number of ball python morphs, just recently adding clown and cryptic. They have a super fast turnaround time, and in addition to genetic testing, they have some beautiful ball pythons on their morph market page. You can check their links and their Instagram. Ninja Balls is more than a breeder, he's a creator. He's the innovative thinker that brought you the Kiki Ball. He strives to make living works of art and improve upon them year in and year out. Follow him today on Instagram and Morph Market and know that with each purchase you make, you're getting quality. Bash Coder Reptiles keeps and breeds a dozen species of pythons and boas specializing in premium ball python morphs and is an authorized distributor of Go for Coco substrates. Be sure to catch Craig's weekly videos on Instagram for tips and insights. CD Constrictors is a veteran breeder who specializes in utilizing powerful codoms into recessives 
most notably Clown Pied and DG. He's a staple at all major NRBCs and Daytona as well. Follow him on IG and Morph Market if you're looking to upgrade what's in your racks. Make sure to head over to redlineshipping.com for discounted FedEx labels and supplies for your reptiles, aquatics, and invertebrates from the live shipping experts. Fast, affordable, and safe. Make sure to use code ROBIN60 for 60% off the FedEx retail rate. It's good for two shipments. Oh, I don't know what happened. What's going on, Matt? How you doing? What's going on? I'm good, man. How are you? Pretty good, pretty good. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you for having me. No problem, no problem. So if you don't mind uh, giving a little, a little introduction of who you are and what it is that you do. Uh, short and sweet. Uh, my name is Matt Burton. I am in uh, Dayton, Ohio, or just south of Dayton, Ohio. I do predominantly ball pythons. Uh, I was doing uh, Western Hognose for a little bit, uh, but now I've switched away from them, just doing the balls. And then I've got a 1.3 of Florida King Snakes that I'm raising up kind of just for fun as a side project. Um, I've got a relatively small collection. I'm around probably 60 to 70 uh, of like, the main collection right now. And then uh, I, I'm pretty much going to cap myself around like the 120 mark for right now. So mm -hmm. relatively small, kind of focused. I say kind of focused because I like too many things. And I've got too many projects going on, but we'll get into that. Yeah, nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with that. Uh, I think I had that same problem, but it's all right. <laughs> so how long you been into it? How long you been uh, been breeding? Uh, breeding. So I, I was in snakes when I was younger. Um, when I was around like 15 or 16, I had a, a small collection of ball pythons. So like my first, uh, morse that I got, I got from Garrett DeMeyer and like everybody else, I wanted to make, but, uh, bumblebees. So I bought a female spider and a male super pastel, raised them up. They were ready to breed. I never bred them. Like by the time I got everything up to breeding size, I was going, I went to college and so I got rid of everything. Um, before that, the only thing that I had bred uh, was Kenyan Samboas and I had one litter of Kenyan Samboas. And then I uh, went to school. Mm. In my last year of school, I started buying snakes again. Um, my girlfriend at the time, my wife, um, she was not cool with reptiles at all. Uh, so I started to show her like, Beard of Dragons, how people like dress them up and make them goofy. And eventually she wanted to get one of those. So I'm like, okay, this is my way in. I'm eventually going to be able to get snakes again. That's a for sure thing. Cause that, that's, I've, I've always wanted to have snakes again. And then I was browsing Facebook one day and randomly got an ad with a, like, like just a plain pie ball python on it. And I was like, okay, here we go. I'm going back in and uh, started buying stuff again in 2018 and 2019. And then the, uh, like t around 2020, I started taking it more seriously and buying like good, like project stuff. And mm -hmm. this, uh, so I had a, one clutch 2019. I had one clutch in 2020. And then I, uh, 2021, I had eight. 2022, I had 10. Uh, 2023, I had 11. And then this year, I'm looking at around like 25 uh, if everything goes well. But I've got everything that I've been raising up these last couple of years. This is the first year I'm going to have a lot more females come online. So it's going to be dependent on if they want to go or not. But this really would be my, my breakout year, I would say. Nice, nice. So and you got enough room for, for all those babies uh, if they all went for you? Yeah, I've got enough room now. Um, it would be tight, but I've, I've, I've got enough room now. Um, the I, I, I could pair, I think it was, when I was looking at my sheet, I think it was somewhere around like 38 females and mm. I, I've paired 32 uh, but there's a couple of them where it'll be like a three-year-old female who's like 1300 1400 grams that doesn't want to eat females like that I'll put a lock on them see if it sparks them to do something most of the time they'll just start eating again and they won't end up going until the following year anyway but there's always a possibility that those could have clutches so I, I kind of loosely count those in that total Yeah. Mm. 
So where did the the, the where's the K from? Uh, that's that's such the wife name for um yeah. in the KMB or Yep, my wife's name's okay. Kaylee. Yep, it's Kaylee and Matt Burton. Okay. Yeah, she got to have something. Does she help you at all? Yeah, she'll come, it, most of the like day to day stuff is me, but she'll come down and help out like whenever I need like an extra set of hands or, or something. Like I'm, I, I guess you can call it like call it a fall, I guess, but I'm, I'm real particular about how things are done. So like all the cleaning and maintenance and everything, I kind of just want to handle myself. But she'll come down here and, and hang out with me. We'll put music on and we'll go through and look at everything and kind of decide routes that we want to take, see what she likes because she likes like the pretty stuff the pretty snakes and so it's it's fun that way but like the yeah. day-to-day montane stuff that's that's me what about rodents what do you uh, what do you do with rodents do you breed, breed your own or do you have to actually go out and purchase them yeah no if, if i was purchasing rodents it would be tough um we breed all our own i have a a local friend i was breeding all of mine here so what happened was whenever I started breeding, once I hit like, I think it was 17 snakes, I started breeding my own rodents and I was doing rats in my garage and I had like two mortar racks and it was no big deal and it was easy to keep up with. Now that I'm up to like six mortar racks, an ASF rack, and then we've got uh, mice going as well, um, we moved and in the new space, it was just not feasible to have rats in my garage where we're at now. So I've got a friend who lives about 10 minutes away um his name's charles napier napier exotics he does mostly boas um but on his property he's got a barn so we we share rat space in there so we kind of tag team the rodents but we i'll have to throw up a video sometime soon because we 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 put a lot of work in, into the uh into the rat barn we probably got somewhere around 75 um tub like tubs of like rat colonies 75 colony tubs um, and then a couple grow out racks. Uh, we just recently started doing the ASF. So we built out an ASF rack. Um, and then we got uh, probably 15 colonies of uh, mice. That way we can kind of have anything at our disposal if snakes want to be picky. Yeah. Nice. Nice, nice. So with the, um, the ASF tubs, are you building those differently than, than around the Norwegians? The rat. Yeah, so um, right now we've got um, like 1.3. Um, some of them are 1.4s. Most of them are 1.3 colonies in the uh, the ARS 10 series. So I, I only live like an hour and a half away from the ARS warehouse. So I just I went one day and just grabbed a bunch of tubs and uh, we just built a rack around those. And uh, I, I like the 1.3 in those. And then um, we're getting ready to do a grow out rack. Um, either I'm either going to use like the 50 series or I'll use the 70 series. We're going to play around with what would fit in our space the best, but that way we've got something better for the ASF grow outs because once you get those rolling, you can get so many of them. How long you been vending? Um, first one was probably two years ago. I, I don't vend very often. Um, it's, I, I enjoy it. I enjoy the like social aspect of it. Um, but it's like the, the stress on the animals kind of spooks me. So I don't like to do it a lot. Um, and I don't have like a lot of volume. So most of the time shows don't really make sense for me, especially when the stuff that I'm selling is like a male pastel pied het, whatever. So it's, you know, there, some of them are show snakes, but some of them have like the, the extra, price on them that they're typically not going to sell at a show unless it was like a bigger show right but the um first ones that i was doing i did the so i'm close to the cincinnati reptile show sin city it's about 25 minutes from me and that's a monthly show um I, I do that one from time to time i do the indianapolis show so ars puts on a, a reptile show it's a midwest reptile show and i've got uh, a couple friends in indianapolis so i'll go do that show Another reason to make it like a social aspect, I get to go hang out with people that I don't see very often. And then the uh, most recently I did the St. Louis uh, NARBC in uh, November. Uh, that, that was a fun show. So I'm, I'm going to do that one again. That one's only about five hours from me. Um, but I'm, I'm probably going to keep it limited. I might do six to ten shows a year max and probably just be from November till 
you know, June or July. I may do this at Schaumburg and ARBC once I have more production. Uh, but like right now, where we, I'd be coming up, that would have be my next show if I were to do that one. I've got nine snakes left. So it's once I've got the 25 clutches a year, mm-hmm. no problem. But when I'm sitting on 10, 11 clutches, it's just, it's not feasible to do shows all the time. But I know I enjoy them. I think the big yeah. thing with them, though, is like the networking. Like, I like shows like Timmy, where it's like, I'm, I'm not going to be able to get a table. It's like, I'm going to go, I'm going to hang out, I'm going to talk to everybody that I can, because that one is how you like make relationships and, and, and further yourself in the hobby. And two, it's just fun. Like you get to go talk to people that like in your, in your day to day, how many people do you get to talk to in like in your real life that can blabber about snakes for hours? Right. When you can go somewhere for a whole weekend and just let it all out. Uh, That's something that you did when you first got into the hobby. Sorry. I'll answer that one for um, banner real quick. I, I have not done the Hilliard show. Um, I was talking to the, um, the, I think it's the lady that puts it on about doing it on um, this upcoming year because I know they added another building. So that's the Hilliard show is the uh, Columbus reptile show. And I, it's the, I think it was the very first reptile show actually. Um, and they just added a whole another building. So I'll, I'll probably look into doing that one. Mm-hmm. So you want to, um, like, mainly stay stay local, do local shows to relieve stress? Or would you be willing to go ahead and um, travel outside the state or travel distance to, to do some shows? Yeah, no, I mean, the furthest one that I've done Once so far is... You got the clutches up. Right, right. Yeah, the furthest one that I've done so far is five hours, and I, I, I can knock that out no problem. Once I've got animals that warrant, um, you know, like full weekends and overnights and hotels and all that, then, yeah, I have no problem driving. I mean, a, a lot of my job is driving, so I, driving is, is nothing for me. So um, I'd probably go up to, like, 10 hours for a good show I, I would drive. But, again, that would be within those, like, you know, 6 to 10 shows a year, having, you know, uh, a show that I do once or twice a year that's an 8- or 10-hour drive, no big deal. It's not like I'm doing it, you know, one every weekend. Yeah. Did you start networking uh, early on, or is that something that you did once you could start getting more comfortable within breeding? Uh, I mean, I tried to, um, and it was mostly with like local people, uh, and it's really just because I hadn't like before I hadn't gone to any of the big shows, so it was never really like face to face. It's one thing to message somebody on Instagram and have a conversation there, but like seeing people in person, that's, that's when like the real, real networking starts. But in, in the beginning, I probably didn't do as good of a job as I, as I should have. I kind of just had it. Uh, well, I, I, I say that, but then again, in the beginning, it was just like, I'm just going to do this as a fun little like side hobby. I might have like 10, 15 snakes and breed them like that. I mean, that never works out. We always end up with hundreds, but um, in the beginning, I didn't really feel like I needed to push real hard to meet everybody that I could and like form relationships because it was just like, I'm just going to go to work, come home. I've got my snakes. I do my thing on my own. And then I, you know, it's just, it's just part of my life. But now that it's like a bigger thing, I want to share it. I want to meet more people and talk about it all day long. So I stretch that out a little bit further. Yeah. So um, what would you think consider is the best, Decision you made since you started breeding ball python, or you can even say I'm breeding in general because you just start with the hogs. This hog knows it. Yeah, the best decision probably keeping myself controlled a little bit to not buy everything that I just want. That that took a little bit um, because in the beginning. It was like, oh, I like this project, so I'm going to buy that. I'm going to get into, like, Hypo Clown. I like this. I like DG Clown. I'm going to get into that, too. Oh, but Puzzle's really nice. I'm going to get into that. Oh, but Tri-Stripe. That's cool. I'm going to get some Tri-Stripe. But I got to have Pies. And, like, I, it's within these last, like, yeah. 18 months, I'm like, you got to chill. Like, you need to focus on. I got to learn that. Smaller... You did what? What did you say? I got to learn that. Because I'm oh, man, I'm jumping on every freaking project that I like. I gotta get that discipline. It's hard, man. It's hard. There's so many cool snakes to make, but 
not everybody can make all of them. So. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Kid, uh, when I first discovered Morph Market, it was a problem. Oh, yeah. You waste so much time scrolling through Morph Market. I mean, it's not really wasting like, time. Most of the time, you're doing like research on stuff that you like. So, I mean, that's helpful, but it's easy to get a couple hours past scrolling Morph Market. Oh. <laughs> what are some of the favorite projects that you're working on right now? Um, puzzle is up there for sure. I think puzzle, at least right now, like this season is my, is, is definitely my favorite of what I'm pushing the most. Um, I'm a, I'm a little spread, so I'm excited about all of it. Um, I, if I were to say like my, my one project is hypo puzzle. That's, that's what I'm, my, I'm most excited about, but for like my breeding season in general, I think I'm most excited about building my base up a little bit better. Uh, for my first couple of years, I had clutches, but there wasn't a ton that I really wanted to hold back and use for my future projects. So most of the time, it would be taking a whole clutch, selling it all, and I would buy one animal with that. And then the next clutch, I would sell it all, okay. buy a male. And then I kind of just like slowly put together projects that way where I... I, I'd be able to have more if I would have kept the, the holdbacks, but it would have been more stuff that I wasn't as stoked about as if I were to go out and buy uh, the projects that I wanted to go towards. So like my base is this year, like I really need to start holding stuff back now that it's stuff that I want to hold back. Right. So like I'm going to have like yeah. uh hypo head, DG, DG head, hypo stuff, females. I need to keep those back. DG head, exanthic stuff, females. Those are staying hypo clown stuff. Those are staying hypo head puzzles. Those are staying. So like, this year is like my, like I said, like kind of like my breakout year, but this is also like what I think is my foundation year. This year is going to give me yeah. the stuff that I need to be able to build on. Absolutely. Absolutely. So what, um, what that's a hypo clown. I mean, uh, hypo puzzle. That's going to be like your main project that you, that you trying to build off of. And then, yeah, um, I'll probably keep stuff. more of that. I'll probably keep more of that. I, I really, really like that project uh, and, and puzzle in general. Um, like I, I'm, I don't have any yet, but I'm like making double head um, DG puzzle with uh, um, two clutches on those and trying to get a couple codoms in there. Um, but I'm, I'm a big fan of the hypo puzzle for sure. And, and hypo in general, like hypo clown, we're going to hypo clown, hypo tri-stripe, we're going to hypo tri-stripe. Like anything with hypo layered on top of it with another pa uh, pattern recessive is, is, is right up my alley. Yeah. There's a, there's a lot of hypo fans up, up in this chat too. Like the whole Wiz thing, that's, <laughs> that's the, their main gene. So it's my favorite, dude. When I, so when the I language first got of A lot of people right now. When I first ba got back in and I was trying to decide like what I wanted, all the talk was like hypo sucks. It, it just looks like an animal in shed, yada, yada. But it's like the whole time I was buying stuff, it was like, I like hype. Like this, this looks pretty to me. I don't know if I'm just wrong or if everybody else is wrong, but it turned out everybody else is wrong. Hypo's amazing. And I'm making my whole collection around it. Yep. Yep. This coming in, they know what it is. <laughs> Yeah, I'm I'm showing up all, all the all the all the, <laughs> the the hypo levels is going crazy up in there. Hypo tri strike. Hypo tri strike's a cool project. Yeah, yeah, I already know. Like I wanna do you have any hypo tri strike? Uh no, I don't have um visual. You got any visual hypo tri strike? No, I don't. Um I've got one pairing for it and she's at where's she at? Here she Good luck. Good two, luck. Two, two weeks ago, she was a 20 millimeter, and she still looks like she's growing really well. But it's a uh, uh, fire tri-stripe het hypo to a black pastel hypo het tri-stripe. Nice. So ideally, fire, yeah, black pastel hypo tri-stripe. <laughs> 
fingers crossed. Black pastel is one of those jeans that look good in everything, in my opinion. Yeah. Yep. And, I, and I'm a fan yeah, of I'm cinnamon too. I get, I and I let it be known. Like I get hate for for liking cinnamon. Cinnamon clowns look great. Cinnamon puzzle looks amazing. Cinnamon tri stripe, awesome. Cinnamon pies aren't great, but it's cinnamon and everything else. It looks so nice. It's such a nice rich brown color, and people hate on it. I don't get it. Yeah. <laughs> I, I, see, I was a fan of cinnamon until <laughs> so I've seen some combos that cinnamon, then I seen the black pastel version. Like, oh, hold up. I think I like, <laughs> like this a little bit you better. Like, like black, black pastel, pastel is like, like the big but brother. I, I got some nice cinnamon stuff too. <laughs> I'm not going to hate because I know there's some, some cine lovers. No disrespect. Like, I think uh, some things look different. Uh, butter and lesser, I think some things look, look different with lesser and butter. So. Still a thing. Ooh. So, what is your your animal that you have in your collection right now that you can't wait to to grow up that you can breed to breed? Huh. Um. I've got. Two of each, um, but they're but it's the same. It's the same project. It's uh, I've got two point two uh, hypo blackhead pet puzzles, and I'm I'm real excited to see what a, a in general a super blackhead puzzle looks like, but a hypo super blackhead puzzle, and then um, just so be it. My my puzzle mail is also het pied, so I've got one point one of those are also het pied. So I, I don't I'm not gonna like push too too heavily towards uh puzzle pie but the with the pairing eventually to possibly make a super blackhead hypo puzzle pie i wouldn't be upset to hit that mm -hmm. um but as far as the like the main collection right now that i that i want to see grow up that's stuff that i hit this last year that i'm, I'm growing up it's definitely the blackhead hypo head puzzle stuff nice nice i love blackhead yeah, and the blackhead your, puzzles look really cool. Uh, what's your favorite dark and jean? What's up, uh, Corey? Probably blackhead. Um, just darkening jeans. Um, but I also really like um, like confusion. Confusion is like the, you know it's pattern, but it's also like confusion. Yeah. Dark. yeah. I like confusion. It's like a leopard, uh, like a super leopard, leopard on on steroids. Yeah, they look good, man. I, I, I waited too long to get into them, and my uh, clown stuff is kind of small. Like, I've just got um, – so I've got a, a leopard confusion het clown male, um, and I'm running him to three clown combo females. Like, my clown stuff is kind of just like I'm just – I'm going to make some cool clowns, and that's it, and I might keep them over there, and I'll use those females in the future for, like, double, triple recessive later on. But I just kind of want to make, make some cool-looking clowns, and confusion clowns look amazing. So I'm, I'm going to try to make a couple of bunches nice. of that this year. Have I seen? Uh, I don't think I've seen a puzzle pie. If I have, uh, there's a couple on um, Morph Market. Uh, I can't remember his last name. Eric. Um, it's a uh, Warrior Reptiles, I think. But if you like go to the ones that have been sold, um, mm -hmm. he's he's had uh, I think three or four on there. Uh, puzzle pie and then pastel puzzle pie, and then um, Barry Swope made the hypo puzzle pie. Um, the ones that Eric had made, they were, okay. um, like they had a good amount of pattern on them. So you could see like a little bit of the influence. Um, most of it is kind of, you just, you have the puzzle ice stripes and then you can, you can see it in the pattern, but it's not like puzzle pattern yet, but we've only seen it with pastel in it. So like, what does Enchi do? What does Trick do? What does, um, like Jungle Woma do? Anything that like brings more pattern back on there and kind of allows so like when you see like Enchi and clown pies and it allows it to kind of play with the pattern a little bit more we don't know what that pattern's going to play like mm -hmm. um the one that barry made the hypo puzzle pie the colors on it look like the, the oranges on it are really nice uh as it, as it ages especially but it was it was pretty high white so there wasn't like a lot to see on that one mm. i got a seat I'm loving uh that ultra melt pie uh, ultra melt puzzle, and that's one yeah. of my favorites. 
that looks incredible, especially with size. And um, uh, Winston posted oh, yeah. uh, that, the mail that was breeding. Oh. And that, with size, that thing looks amazing. Brock, the one that Brock, yeah. Mm hmm. Amazing. I still, I want to, the, the one that, uh, well, I know it was the head clown that Will produced, but it looked like it had tri stripe bitted too, just the, the bands on the, on the dorso. It had that kind of effect, didn't it? Yeah. That, and that lace. Was, that, that's, that was just an amazing animal. I can't believe that. Yeah. Like, I want to, I need to know what's everything that's in that snake. <laughs> just, I, I, I got to know. Yeah, he's he's cryptic and he likes to post it and just like it let you think what it is. Oh figure it out. What's going on? What's going on? So what has anything happened that um you had to learn from something bad that happened while you was breeding and you had to uh, take it back take a step back and learn from it? Um I mean, I haven't had anything too crazy happen, uh, luckily. Um, the, the, I mean, the, really the worst things that happened were, like, the first time males going all food and having to be pulled from rotation, and then some of their females not end up going. That's just part of it. That's not like a, I wouldn't call that a, a, a bad thing that happens. That's just how it goes. Um, the, well, going into my first year of breeding the hog nose, uh, in brumation, my female, like her first year going to be paired coming out of brumation, she died in brumation. And I took her in and got a, a necropsy mm. done on her because I was, uh, had no clue why like, she would have passed away. Um, and they said, um, well, I hate to break it to you, but she was full of follicles. Like full of follicles. I'm like, I really just wish you wouldn't have told me oh, that. Damn. Like, that, just, that just made it hurt worse. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, but that, that just that was the first time that I had like something die on me, and it was just yeah. kind of like the gut check. But that was when I still had like a, a really small collection, so that hurt a lot worse than it would if oh, I had yeah. a large collection, oh, right? Yeah. That's not oh well, that's still that's bad, but still not to have so much ever because uh, uh I had a, a lot had to learn a lot because I wasn't like I didn't do much networking, I didn't do much talking to anybody. So I lot did a lot of stuff learning on my own. So I had to learn through a lot of mistakes. So yeah. it, it was good to get out there and talk to people just so <laughs> for that sake. Yeah. yeah, I mean, at minimum, you're bouncing uh, ideas off of each other, but then you're good. learning how to how to breed. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So, when you said that your parents, like, you, you started collecting at 15, so your parents were cool with you uh, collecting snakes. So that's something that you did on your own, or is that something they did for you? No, they were not cool with it at all. <laughs> um, my first snake... I was in um, fourth grade. So, like, growing up, I was obsessed with dinosaurs. Like, I was that kid. Everything I had was dinosaurs. And so, naturally, I liked lizards and snakes. But first, it was lizards. I really wanted lizards. When I was probably uh, second or third grade, I had finally gotten my mom to break down and get me a lizard. So, we, my, we went to the pet store. We walked back through. I was looking at lizards, what I wanted to get. I was probably looking at, like, green and old. I don't even remember. Something simple. And then uh, my sister, my younger sister was there with us, and she was playing with these guinea pigs. And the lady that was working there just happened to say, oh, somebody just dropped off two guinea pigs. We're not allowed to resell them. We have to, like, rehome them for free. So I didn't get a lizard that day. We got two guinea pigs. And then I had to, they were cool, but I had to deal with that for a year. Oh, and then I finally got my mom to take me back and get it. <laughs> uh, my first thing I ever got was a crested gecko. Uh, I had a crested gecko for a little bit. Uh, then I had a gargoyle gecko for a little bit. Um, and then in fourth grade, uh, okay. the rule, my, my mom was okay with the lizards. Didn't like the lizards, but she was okay with those. Um, she just didn't care for snakes at all. And then uh, fourth grade, I, really wanted a snake and then the rule was if i ended up getting straight a's all year i would get a snake like at the end of the year so i i mean it was fourth grade but i mean i got straight a's in fourth grade got the got a normal ball mm -hmm. python that yeah. summer and i had him for 
probably three or four years and then um, ended up getting rid of them. And then like two weeks later, I'm like, wow, I really wish I wouldn't have gotten rid of them. Having snakes was so cool. And then that just kind of snowballed into I'm going to get a bunch of snakes. So then I had um, like albino checkered garter snakes. Uh, I had a couple of those and like feed them like minnows in their water bowl and fish, watch them fish for them. Those were cool. Um, and then I started getting into the sand boas and I had like a kind of a small collection. I had probably had like six or seven sand boas, um, had a litter of those. Those I was things are a little up. mean too. Sand they boas. can be, they can turn on you quick. They, mm -hmm. they like, they don't like yeah. strike out at you. They strike sideways. So it's like, even, no matter where you grab them, they can get you. Um, yeah. and then, uh, I had, I had, I've had one boa. Um, I had a, uh, a hog Island boa. And that, like, by far was my favorite snake I've ever had. She was so chill. I would get home from school uh, in high school, and I would get her out, and I would, like, lay down, and I would cross my ankles. There was a gap in between my legs. She would curl up in between my legs and sleep for however long I would let her. She would just sit there uh, the whole time. Like, I had, like, a weird, like, love with that snake. Um, but everything went whenever I went to college. I, I had to sell everything off. So I was, like, I was without snakes for three years, and it felt like an eternity. Oh yeah, I bet. I went without um, snakes for a few years, and it, it was it was it was hell. Not hell, but I couldn't wait to um, get back into it. I couldn't have snakes until I um until I left home either. Well, until I left home, my mother was not having it. She, I mean, I used to catch garter snakes, and every time I snuck one in, <laughs> she made me toss them out. Yep, yep. Now my uh, my mom. It kind of worked out for uh, a young boy uh, getting a snake because uh, my mom never wanted to come in my room ever again. So that was like my own little domain. She didn't want to get anywhere near him. So it was awesome. <laughs> oh, damn. <laughs> That's the secret. <laughs> nice, nice. Oh, but um, for your first clutch, you didn't keep anything back for yourself, like like just just the whole back. So what I did. My first clutch, whenever I first started getting back in, um, well, when I when I sold everything off before I went to college, I still had the um, spider and the super pastel that um, I had originally bought, and they were adults. So I, the only thing that I had <laughs> left at the end was the male super pastel. He just, he, he just didn't sell. So my brother took them and just had them as a pet. So he had them for years. And, um, when I got back in my first couple of things, I got, I bought like a normal pied, I bought an Enchi Het pied, and then I had a local guy over here who was selling an adult female, um, pewter, um, pastel cinnamon. And I was like, well, I could just go over to my brother's, pick up the mail that I used to have, the super pastel, and I can make a clutch with that right away. So that the first clutch that I did was a super pastel to a pewter. So I didn't keep anything. I just made like pewters and sterlings and uh, sold them locally on like Craigslist. Um, my, my brother ended up keeping one for like sentimental value because he thought it was cool to have like the, the dad and the daughter to raise up together. But yeah. um, I didn't keep anything from that. And then the second year was a pastel lesser to a pewter. And that was the only clutch that, that following year. So those first two years, I didn't, I didn't keep anything back. I just sold those use that little bit of money to buy like one snake to help further it. So that second year, um, I sold the, the clutch of like cinnamon lesser stuff. I sold the whole clutch and made $1,100 off of that. I took that and I bought a pastel desert ghost possible het pied and it ended up proving out het pied. And nice. I ran that for the initial like pie stuff that I had bought in. So on like the, the $1,000 plus a couple female uh, investments that I had bought my first actual year of having like anything more than one clutch of production, I was making pied het desert ghosts. And those were my like initial holdbacks was pied het DGs and DG pasta pies. Nice. That's real nice. And now you got those, your, um, those babies are the ones that you've been growing up now that are ready to go. Yeah, yeah. So this is the first year where I'm going to have... Last year, one of the DG Hep Pies was, like, she just grew so fast. She, got, she was, like, 1,800 grams. So I put a pairing on her. She never went. But this is the first year where all of those except for one uh, are up to breeding size, and most of them are already building already. So this is, like, my full circle time where the stuff that I've produced is actually going to be producing for me and getting me more generations of stuff that have been born here, raised here. Nice, nice. 
So use um the future. Do you any animals that you think that you will decide that you want to start breeding besides what you got now? Like different species. Point three. Yes. Um, I mean, yeah, for sure. Um, it'd be tough right now because the space that I'm in, like this room is 22 feet by like eight and a half feet. I don't have very much room in here at all. So I'm like, I'm kind of being like picky about trying to keep mostly ball python just because every tub available in here could be a ball python to go towards the projects that I have already. Um, but I, the, the Florida king snakes that I have, I really like those. They're super fun. The hog nose, I'll probably get back into later on um but i'll probably get into like a like a small hog nose project something big like something really high end like big snakes yeah or nah like probably not no <laughs> the, the biggest i would have i like boas a lot um i'd probably do boas but if i had unlimited space yeah i would i would have a boa project for sure um i just don't have unlimited space to be able to have house big animals like that um, I really like the um, the black, what is this, the Sumatran, the short tail pythons. Oh, yeah. They those, are so really dark, cool. yeah. those are really cool. I like those a lot. Um, I've never really worked with the big snakes or honestly had a desire to work with the big snakes. I like handling um, like berms. I've never hold, held a really big retic. Um, the one snake that I held that I had like a immediate like reaction to was a scrub that was so a scrub python that was so fun to hold it was so inquisitive it felt really different than anything mm. i had ever felt that was a cool one that might be one uh but i just i really don't have any interest in having anything that needs like a six or eight foot enclosure it's it's, oh. it's not realistic for me in my space you, you say you like lizards what about big lizards uh, I see Corey's comment with the tree monitor. The tree monitor. Yeah. I've been seeing a lot of tree monitor stuff, especially from from Will and and I mean I know Corey's on the verge of trying to get a whole bunch of them, but I uh, I, I like those. Oh. I would like to have something like that. <laughs> I I just want like a, a display, something that I could have like a cool display, whether it be like dart frogs or a tree monitor or some type of a arboreal snake, where I can just have something pretty because like this is functional. This works really well for the ball pythons but it looks like a warehouse and I'm a reptile guy at heart. Yeah. So having something pretty and like naturalistic is like on my radar. Once I get this room filled with racks and I know where everything's going to be placed, I got to find uh, some spot on this wall to be able to put something pretty. And you said get some Ackies. Ackies are really, really cool. My, uh, so my, my partner I was talking about that does the, uh, the rodents with me. Um, he's in the process of looking for a, uh, like a big, uh, uh, like an outbuilding that he's going to move his reptiles into. That's number one on his list. He's like, I'm getting like, I'm going to build like a, uh, like a 10 foot by five foot cage and have like a colony of Ackies in there. They're, they're, he's, he's stoked about those. So I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to let him do those and I'll, I'll get in that way. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, people good with the, the, the the emerald tree and the the gts uh, i don't i'm not down with the condos just yet maybe one day in the in the future future yeah i think they look cool i, I don't have any experience with them to be able to like yeah. talk on them but i i mean i think they look cool that would that would be one where it was like i'm not gonna have the option of having snakes anywhere else in my house except for the snake room because um my like extended family is petrified of snakes so they all got to be contained down here but if i were in a spot where i could have snakes outside of the snake room that would be like the living room display it would just be like a like a nice center um cage with like a green tree python in it or, or some kind of arboreal where it's like that's a display feature on the wall you know what i mean yeah yeah i do that's why i want some of this i want something just for like because everything is behind and in racks so i yeah. Besides, well, I'm about to get a a, a boa and a, a MBK within the next week or so. But I still nice. something else, something else. What kind of boa? Uh, Dumaros. Oh, cool! Those are pretty. Yeah, they are. I really like the uh, you know the Argentine boas, the um, the BCOs. You seen those? Yeah. 
the Argentine boas are so cool. They're like that black and white, look like a starry sky. Mm. Yeah. Oh, uh, how big? I got, I got, I got, I can't, I don't want to do anything past six feet, even though I, this is potentially can get seven feet, the doom rolls, yeah. but I really don't want nothing bigger yeah. than that. Um, Argentines get bigger. Yeah. See, nah, not for me. At least that's what <laughs> I don't have the experience with them, but that's that's what I've heard that they're a, a bigger of the boa species. I really don't want a snake that's longer than me. I'm I'm six six two, so that's it. Yeah. <laughs> that's it. So I don't know if you if you want to, you can um you can show anything you want because uh, I do we do like seeing some snakes. Sure, why not? Let's see. Especially if something like you said you got some that are available. That would be real cool. Yeah, I got a couple here. I'm going to leave this on this tripod because otherwise I'm going to fight with it trying to get it back on. But oh, I'll you're grab good. my stuff. You're good. What up, Miggy? The Taramara. So, I'll show, show uh, one, I but I've got two. Taramara. So just real quick on these, um, I've got two female um, pastel spot nose, double head DG clowns that are getting size on them. They're up on Morph Market. Everything that I've got here, I'll take offers on. This is the last stuff that I've got from last year. So anything anybody wants, let me know, and I'll give you a good price for watching us here tonight. These I thought were pretty cool. So This year, I had a male pastel spot nose desert ghost, is what he was at the beginning of the year. And then I made some stuff that had, had pied markers. My guy saw it. Tested him, he's had pied. And then I had a clutch that made Kryptons, and he proved out had cryptic as well. So, where am I at here? Ooh. So, these are two males. Uh, and when I, when I first hatched, I saw the head. I'm like, oh, he's a clown. No, they were Kryptons. Uh, but these are male spot nose Krypton, and they're Het Desert Ghost. So I actually ended up hitting five of these males, and these are the two that I've got oh, left. Geez. These are so cool. I, now, I, what I, so I wasn't going to get into the cryptic stuff just because I was working puzzle, and like they're, and they're obviously different, but there's some similarities of how the patterns play, so I wasn't going to get both. But... I, these look so cool. And I, I kept some, like, I, I kept, like, a DG Krypton pet pied male just because, like, they look cool. I'm not, why not work it? So I've got these. Besides those, I've got uh, some, I've got male, like, pied head DGs. And then I'll just show this one as the last one for the for sale stuff. The rest are on Morph Mark. You guys can check it out. Um, this is a female. This is a Krypton Het Desert Ghost. Mm. So if anybody wants in on like that project with those like last males, I'll, I'll throw in a male. If you want to buy her, I'll just throw in the mail for you. One of those spot nose males. Nice. But she's a crazy eater. And then let's see. Might as well show off some other stuff while we're at it. <laughs> <laughs> this girl was a pain for me for a little while i actually had her listed and then i took her down because she didn't want to eat for me um she just started eating again but this is a pastel spot nose dg clown female nice it's almost exantic yeah the pastel really flooded it out but Got her moved around into a different tub and figured out that she just wants to have some small ASFs every couple days. So she gets to do what she wants. She's a DG clown, I guess, right? Yeah. <laughs> Vinny's on his way to your morph market. Hit me up. Anything you want. Let's see. So unfortunately, this one's in shed, but this is my favorite male from last year. 
This is the hypo black head head puzzle. Nice. And then um, as a backup, I kept a, the other male. And this is pastel hypo black head head puzzle. And this one is also head pied. And then we actually just made with my puzzle male, we actually just made an um, pair to a yellow belly combo female, just made an ivory. And it was a male, it wasn't a part though. So my, my puzzle male has got to be yellow belly now. So he's, he's, uh, he proved out hip high. I didn't know he was hip high and now he's yellow belly. He, these males are full of surprises for me this year. What was in the, all in the last snake again? The the pastel DG the uh, the heck clown. The the one that I said wasn't eating well for me. At least said that um eats uh, the ASFs every once in a while. Small AS, ASFs. Oh, that one was a uh, that's a pastel spot nose DG clown. Spot nose DG. Yeah. Yeah. And then, so this is the male that I kept. Um, so last year I made um, two, I, I was pairing for double het DG clowns. That would be pos het pie. And the, um, out of the clutch, I had four females out of three eggs. One egg had twins in it. And the twins ended up being the triple het. So they were triple het DG clown pie. And I wanted this year to make a male to hold back for. And really all I was trying to make was a like a DG double het um, clown pie. But I ended up making a DG Krypton het pie. And he was just so cool. So I'm going to keep him and use him for those That's two females. Wild. I don't have a lot of stuff for the DG clown pie. So I figured why not keep What is that blushing? That. Yeah, that neck stripe on him is really cool. On the dorsal, that the blushing on there? That color yeah. is different. Like, what else was in the pairing? This was um, just the uh, pastel spot nose desert ghost double het cryptic pied to a clown het desert ghost. Um, the clown het DG female. I, right. I mean, she she's really reduced. She might be blade. I don't know what a. I don't think a blade krypton would look like that. I'm not sure. But I grabbed no. her one. That, like the color on it. Yeah, he turned out really it's nice. Like Kenny. And then these were cool. So the coolest snake that I made last year, I don't DG have. Quick time by. <laughs> this is so the coolest one I made last year uh, overall was a desert ghost leopard powerball um so if you go to my um, oh, instagram it's it's pinned on my instagram just because it looks so cool but I, I did end up selling it because i wasn't going to have a use for it as a male wish it would have been a female but it looked super cool um i wasn't pairing to make powerballs but i did make three and they look super cool so oh, this is just nice a that's just a super spot nose um het dg and then she was wow. plus het cryptic and i tested her and she's het through i tested her through charlie and so it's a Powerball double hat DG cryptic. That is the goal to make a few of those. I love spot nose, so I love. I want to make a bunch of Powerballs. Yeah, man, especially keeping them as females for sure. What up, John? Okay. Mm -hmm. so this is a. This is a female that I picked up this year off of Peter Rushton. You can find him if you uh, go to Tinley. He does a lot of true ghost stuff. Um, so, like I said, I'm trying to beef up my females this year. And so I really want, like, DG Hypo stuff. I want DG Exantic stuff. I want um, true ghost stuff. So this last year from Peter, I bought a female pastel true ghost. She's probably not going to show up very well on here, but that's a pastel VPI Exantic Hypo. Okay, nice, nice. Tried to buy the straight 
True Ghost without Pastel, but she had sold right before I, I reached out to him. But it is what it is. <laughs> yeah. What's the first, if you don't mind saying, the first thing you want to put to her? To the True Ghost? Puzzle? Yeah. yeah. Puzzle and then try strike. Sure. Okay. Nice, nice. Yeah. Yeah. Um, from the rip. Yeah, well, here. Let me take this off here. I might as well show what's in the racks. Let's see. <laughs> All right. This is a female. So this is the mom. Oh, Shit. Of the uh, the blackhead hypo het puzzles. That's a hypo super blackhead. And then I bought her as a red jean ringer jean. I'm not too familiar with those myself, but that's what I bought her as. But I love her. She looks so cool. She's spicy. She is nice. Oh my gosh. Yeah. That is She's cool. beautiful. Ooh. So this year she is seeing this boy. Let's see if he's done anything. Not yet. That is a Desert Ghost Trick pet hypo. Um, so with her, I'm just real. Like I said, I'm trying mm -hmm. to bolster up my hypo DG stuff. So I'm trying to make some uh, Blackhead Trick Desert Ghost pet hypos. And then uh, the female he's in with right now, that's a, a pastel OD chocolate double het DG hypo. So this is the only clutch that I have that I could get um, some actual double visual DG hypos. Let's see. We talked about puzzle a little bit. I like this girl a lot. That's a pastel and she puzzle. <laughs> She's mean. Yeah, sir. Uh, the hypo puzzle. Um, I <laughs> yeah, up. see, she's rearing back. <laughs> yeah, this girl's not the nicest either, but um, that's just a hypo het puzzle. Um, so hopefully later um, this fall, hopefully she'll be able to go. She she's a pretty good eater. So, but the hypo stuff, man, that's where it's at. Pastel Cypress hypo. Yes, sir. This is a hypo clown female. She's getting ready to go into her pre lay shed. Um, the trick desert ghost het hypo was paired to her. So I, I, uh, I have one female that I need a male for. <laughs> this is a pastel chocolate Enchi triple desert ghost hypo clown. And I needed a male for her. I don't have anything, any other females, unfortunately. So I was like, I just need to make a male. Um, so hopefully a hypo trick double hat DG clown will come from her to be able to go to that. Let's see. Here's the, this is the fire tri-stripe hypo. The male, Ooh, yeah. he's a little thin. I, I pulled him out from breeding. He's, he's totally done. Um, he, he was up to about 950 grams and then he went off food and then I just gave him one more lock. Like, all right, you're done. So. He, he's bound for a, uh, a car ride and a deep clean and a smaller tub this weekend. <laughs> a long car uh, ride. But for him, I went ahead and got, so I paired to this girl. She's due on the 18th. This is just a GHI het hypo. Um, but I really like what Zach Schrader did with the GHI tri-stripe stuff. So I'm trying to make some uh, GHI hypo at yeah. tri-stripe. Yeah. And then... This is the, that's the female I was talking about, the hypo black pastel het tri-stripe. And she's, I mean, she, right by now, she's probably at around like 24 mm -hmm. millimeters. She's going pretty well. Uh, one thing I'm pretty excited about this year um, is the Sapphire stuff. I don't know if you're familiar with that. It's an incomplete dominant. Sapphire is super, super cool. Um, it's like a pattern mm. uh, enhancing gene, but it's hard to see on here um, with the, kind of blown out color but this is a firefly sapphire 
Okay. So the sapphire kind of turns up the pattern a little bit, but that's a um, sapphire firefly hypo, and I paired her to a hypo clown male um, to try to get sapphire into my clown, but also the hypo clown stuff. Um, she was at 30 millimeter the last time I checked her. And then this is a firefly. Does it have a super? Does it have what do you say? Does it have a super form of the sapphire? It does. Yeah. Um, so the super sapphire, it's, uh, it, I mean, really, it just looks like two copies right on top. Pattern is real crazy, but it's not too crazy to where it mm -hmm. overpowers other stuff that you put into it. So I've seen like a, a lesser super sapphire and it looked awesome. Um, there is a okay. black pastel phantom super sapphire that was made and looks incredible. Um, so it's, it's, it's really, really high patterned but you can also influence it by putting anything in it. So I'm, I'm really, really hopeful with sapphires, especially with the super. This one is a spot nose firefly okay. sapphire. So not too crazy, but this over here, this is just a Mojave sapphire. Tough to see in this oh. lighting down here, but. Yeah. See, yeah, you can see it does. Yeah, it's dark too. Yeah, she is dark. She is dark for sure. Dark, yeah, it's, and I'm real in it, in it. Um, you taste the pattern too. Say again. So it darkens and it changes up the pattern. Yeah, it's pretty dark. It's mostly a pattern gene, um, but it, it, it is pretty dark for a pattern gene. So this girl is getting close. That's a. Uh, that's just a straight hypo. Uh, but she was paired to the uh, pastel puzzle double head hypo pied. Um, Can you turn I your phone sideways? What'd you say? Yes. Can you turn yes. your phone sideways? Yeah. How's that? Yep, yep. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you. Yep. Thank absolutely. you, Mana. Um, so that is a, uh, a clutch just to give me some more female hypo head puzzles because I shot myself in the foot and sold them this year. But it is what it is. Um, let's see. So this, I've seen a lot of stuff recently with jeans being called other jeans. Um, this is a Harlick one yeah. and, uh, possibly same as a Royal, possibly same as extremist, possibly uh -oh. same as whatever. I don't know. I got it as a Harlick one. So <laughs> it's Harlick one's pretty Harlequin cool. Super Harlick one stuff. Cool. All right. And then, uh, yeah. that female. When you say Royal, okay, I can see the Royal. Yeah. So I made... Some, so that's the Harlick one head DG. And then some of the initial holdbacks that I had my first year. So this came from her. I don't see it in that. I, I think that's just a straight DG. Um, it pos het pied, but I kept three females because they had, they had that. Oh, and yeah. Then, tracks. Then, yeah. Super I tracks. Think, I think this girl got the Harlick one. I think I know I'm not I don't work the jeans so I mean it's I just different. have it. Uh, but she's the nicest DG that I've made. She's so dark. I don't know if it shows up at all, but man, she is so crisp. And then the third sister. Yes, yeah, she's big and looking like that. I think that's Harlick one as well. So I think like the the wide dorsal kind of drippy looking. Sometimes mm -hmm. you'll get like little hooks off of it. You'll get these like side mm. just bubbles. That reminds me of, of what you showed. Yeah, but they're cool. This one, um, this girl stopped eating for a long time. This is the one where I, I went ahead and put a pairing on her just because, like, she's old enough. She just hadn't been big enough. So I put the puzzle double head hypopied on her. Worst case scenario, I'll have uh, double head DG puzzles to hold back. And uh, if they're pied, cool, whatever. She's going into shed, and she fired DG. This girl is really cool. I got this girl from Will Moreau's Royal Canadian Reptiles. This is a Orange Dream Cinnamon, mm. my favorite, vanilla, possible het tri stripe. <laughs> you think that'll prove het tri stripe? Oh yeah. 
That's, That's crazy. People had trash right. That look at the tail. Look at that yep. right right there. That is nice. I love her, man. She's super. Cool. I like the flow in Ellen heads. That is nice. Yeah, and I like this down here. If it shows, if you can see it, where like that white is coming up on the sides here. I love this. Yeah, like that lacy type look too. Yeah, yeah, cinder. exactly. Mm -hmm. So I'd, I'd like to be able to have tri stripes that have like this bubbly up here, but raise it up a little bit and then bring these sides up. I want to see what Calico does in that. But first, I kind of just want to mm. see what a uh, a vanilla cream tri stripe looks like. Because I mean, vanilla creams look cool. What what happens when you put a really strong dorsal pattern gene on it, right? Yeah. This is my male. He's going into shed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> this dude's a monster. He eats so well. That's the, uh, the guy's made all my puzzle that's stuff Krypton? for me. Nope. That's the pastel puzzle. Oh, uh, double pet. And apparently might be yellow belly unless something weird happened with this pairing that we had. So, yeah, but he's cool. He's done really well for me. He'll he'll breed no problem, and he eats every week. He's a good dude. There's a hypo clown boy. Hey Matt, do you have any HRA? I got the, I do not. the head. <laughs> the, 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 the. Sorry, promise you don't have any HRA. <laughs> I do not have any HRA. I like it. I think it's cool. This guy is one of the main breeders for me this year too. He's always ready to go, dude. Um, that's a black pastel, scaleless head, VPI exanthic, pet Ooh. desert goat. Nice. So, I'm not I'm not working the scaleless project. He just happens to be scaleless head. Okay. Um, but I've got him to a couple females, and uh, I just got an ovulation. Go in there. Yeah, I know. He just wants to breed, dude. I got uh, got an ovulation <laughs> yesterday. So she's she's going down now, but um, he got her. Um, this is a leopard spot nose het desert ghost. So it's het to het, and uh, back when those initial results came out, doing het DG to het DG seemed like it'd be insane. But I'm okay with it now. Now that we know everything, but uh, hoping for you know leopard spot nose DG with black pastel, and then 100% uh, het exanthic. That'd be uh, kind of along those lines with the females that I need to hold back. Will want to know was that VPI online is it dark face or regular? Uh, just regular. As far as I, I didn't buy her as dark face, I just bought her as uh, or bought everything that I have that is VPI. I've just bought just a straight VPI. Yeah, so um, this is one for the hypo project stuff. This is a GHI Mojave double hit hypo puzzle. I've got a few pairings on her. She was sitting at like 11. It looks like GHI Mojave Hypo already. Yeah, yeah, she is kind of like that. Since shed? That, that hit hype. No, she's not. She actually just shed recently. This is like her true color. Oh. Yeah, hmm. she's just like really slate gray. I think it's probably just the hit Hypo. But I like her a lot. This girl's getting close to uh, an ovulation um she is at she's about about 32 right now this is a uh black pewter desert ghost nice and i put the uh the desert ghost trick to her how often do you office now uh probably like every I, tr I try once a month but to be honest i don't like doing a uh like set up the ultrasound and do the entire room. I just get kind of burnt out on it. So I'll come down and I'll turn the ultrasound on mm -hmm. while I'm like cleaning or something. And I'll go through the adults and be like, Oh, you look like you're, you know, if, if a female is laying sideways or if she's hugging the front of the tub, I'm like, let's just get a quick scan on you real quick. Um, otherwise if a female is like sitting at the back of the tub and they're still eating, I, I don't really bother with, with, uh, uh, ultrasounding them, but if they're showing me signs that they're saying, hey, I think I'm going to breed, then I'll start ultrasounding them, and I'll do it every couple weeks or so. This female, um, last time I checked her, she was at 22 mil. That is a GHI Mojave Desert Ghost. Nice. So if you, 
Oh, damn. And I paired the uh, I paired the puzzle hypo to her. Get some holdbacks from that. So, GHI Mojave and GHI Mojave DG. Mm-hmm. A DG Diggins. makes it. You like what it did to the sides. Yeah, it, yeah, you can see more pattern on it. Yeah. Yeah, she's cool. Uh, this is another one that uh, is it hat tri stripe? Is it extremist? I don't know. Um, this is a Enchi <laughs> Fire Enchi Fire Het tri stripe. Hmm. Show me an Enchi Fire that looks like that. I don't know. Hmm. So we'll see. That's a female. Hopefully, she'll be ready to go next year. Um, stay on the tri stripe stuff real quick. Uh, this female I bought as a fire tri stripe pop head hypo. She proved out. So, this is a really good looking tri stripe, I think. She's super pretty. Let's see. Let's see if she'll comply. I like the tri stripe stuff, man. I'll tell you, whenever I first got into uh, JD. back into snakes, I really liked symmetry. Um, so whenever I f was buying my hog nose stuff, I was buying. I don't know if you're familiar with the, the morphs on them, but anaconda or conda makes blotches on the back, and I was really, really adamant about having uh, condas that had very symmetrical pattern going down the back. And whenever I was getting into ball pythons, tri stripe drew me to that like crazy, just because the symmetry that you can have on them on the other side. It looks so even the pastel tri stripes look good. Oh yeah. I like pastel, but they look the pastel good. desert ghost tri stripe is incredible. Yes. Yes. Let's see. This is a female that I held back just because why not? Uh, that's a pastel Reach yellow belly. David. That's a mm -hmm. pastel yellow belly triple head hypo puzzle pied. Figured if I'm going to keep this male, I might as well keep one more female to go for triples, whatever. Um, this, uh, Keys, if you want a Powerball female, that's a pastel Powerball, uh, Het DG. She's past Het Cryptic. I haven't tested her yet, though. So I've got her and her sister. Oh, yeah. Let's see. Uh, these were unfortunate. Um, so Kevin with KDF, um, last uh, the last October Tenley, um, I bought two females that were het puzzle and 50% pos het VPI exanthic. And I just got their test results back recently and neither one of them are het exanthic. So these are just het puzzles. Take some. Yep. So take gambles. Sometimes they work. Sometimes they don't. This is the uh, leopard confusion het clown male that I'm yeah. using. It's not a very good confusion example in my opinion. So I'm kind of curious to see what the babies will look like. Dark. There's a pastel cypress clown. I've got uh, one pairing for him, uh, and she's probably getting close to ovulating here. This is a Huffman het clown. Yeah, don't see a lot of Huffman, oh, yeah, but I like yeah, it. Yeah. Really I'm liking pretty. Huffman. Yeah, it's super cool. Yeah. Super looks nice. You have like a fourth power. person. I know that guy Huffman. <laughs> See if I can get these guys to come out. This is my favorite of the king snakes. Oh, she's in shed. This is a hypo exanthic Florida king. Or a oh. ghost. This girl just ate last night. In a shed, nice. Uh, this is a hypo white side Florida king snake, and she is het exantic. You say you got a 1.3 or 1.2? Uh, 1.3. So those two are females. This is a okay. female. Uh, this is a female. This is just a straight hypo.
And then this is the mail I have. I'll be getting a different mail, but this is the mail that I bought with my group. Um, but this is a, I don't know if it's like a red phase or a red line or whatever it is, but I bought him as a red hypo. He's just got, you know, enhanced reds. But I love the head on him, dude. They, the heads look so cool. <laughs> Probably Sorry, hold on. You're breaking up on me. I'm gonna switch to data real quick. You good, Jason? Got me. You're good. Yep, yep. NG Pied Head DG. That's a female I kept back from my first year. Um, the you got frozen for a second. Oh, you got. I don't me know. That's me. Hold on. Let me see. You go. Out. It might be my my screen. Let me know if you got me back. No, not nope. Let me see. You probably gotta leave out and come back. There you go. Hold on. Technical difficulties. Y'all bear with this. Get that up there, John. Let me see what you're saying. Yeah. Like the extremists and all that? I think they are. Uh, you are back and you're good to go. All right. Like, are all the tie stripes com um, compatible? Uh, as far as I'm aware. For John yeah. is asking. As far so as I, I'm aware. I know that he did, he did hear um, a tri strike to um, an extremist and he got tri stripes. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but I, what, what I was showing, if it went off, that's a NG Pied head DG female. Uh, that I produced my first year of breeding. Uh, the mom is just a big old Enchi Het Pied. She's about 4,500 grams. She's giving me the one clutch, and out of 11 eggs, I hit one pied. Luckily, it was a female Enchi Pied Het DG. She hasn't done anything for me since, but that's all right. Let's see... Some clown stuff. I don't have a lot, but that's a GHI spot nose clown. Okay. Yes, my language. That's a cinnamon fire clown. Spot nose, anything in clown. Yeah, I put the uh, I put the confusion on her. I, I want to get some confusion spot nose, confusion GHI clown stuff. Here's that clown head. I like the Cinnamon Dark Knight, too. Yeah, the Cinnamon Dark Knight looks great. Yeah, this is the uh, this is the mom of that Desert Ghost Krypton that we looked at. So, I mean, she's just a clown head DG, but she's really reduced. Mm -hmm. That's like Blade. Um, like that's that's what I thought, too. Blade. That's what I thought, too. I, I, I don't think Enchi, but I think, I think she's Blade. Um... We did one pairing um, two years ago, and it uh, was a, uh, a pied het exanthic to a double het exanthic pied, and uh, nice. on four eggs hit two exanthic pieds, hit a male and a female. Oh, so tough. held back that girl. Congrats. I'll probably yeah. thank you. I'll probably uh, like a DG het pied to her or something um, next year. Uh, I, I do have some males down here. I need the list. Um, I probably need to get a couple more meals in them. They're done breeding. I just need to get them on, on Morph Market. But that's a OD Clown Het Pied. If anybody wants an OD Clown Het Pied, <laughs> give you a good deal on him, let me know. Uh, <laughs> Big boy. That Yeah, that's, that's a uh, Triple Het um, DG Clown Pied. I kept him back just to have as a male, just in case I didn't make a male, but I ended up making that. DG Krypton Pet Pied, so I'm gonna I'm gonna let him go, and then 
I've got this guy. This is a Cinnamon Enchi Clown Het Hypo. I bred him That's to one different. female. He's not going to go, so I'm going to let him go. <laughs> These are really cool. Um, so, like, if we're talking about, like, Het influence, this is a double Het True Ghost. And I don't know, oh, this yeah. is my first time having, like, Het Exantic stuff. But I just, I feel like I can see it. Yeah, definitely influence. Another one, same thing, just pastel. Yep, that's just a pastel. So pastel, double head, true ghost, and then female, uh, like a normal double head, true ghost. So I've got um, these are proven breeders. Um, and then on this girl, I put the pastel puzzle, double head, hypopod, because if I can get a uh, hypo head puzzle and test it out for the head exantic. That'll, that'll push me towards that true ghost puzzle pretty quickly if I can hit that. And then this girl, I used the uh, trick desert ghost het hypo so that I can hopefully get some, uh, maybe if I can get a female, even if it doesn't have, you know, trick in it, hopefully I, I would love it if it did, but get a, a hypo that ends up being double het DG exantic. That'd be a female that I could use interchangeably for, for any of my projects. This is that first male that yeah. did it for me. This is a the pastel DG het pied. He's a big dude. Mm -hmm. But I bought him. I said, let me see the belly. Too. Show me what the belly looks like. He sent me photos. I mean, obviously he was a baby. He sent me photos like this. I'm like, yep, let's do it. I'll take them. I'll prove out that pop head. Yeah. Oh, nice track. Yeah. yeah. Oh, man. <laughs> So that's a pause head, definitely. Nice low white pie. Oh, yeah, what do you prefer a low white uh, mid or, or high white? Uh, I like mid. Um, I, I mean, I I don't really like high white um, unless we're talking about something that's just kind of like a cool, like bright orange or something. Like, you know, those like super OD pies where it's just like one big splash of orange. I think they look cool. Um, but it's not something that I'm going to try to work into my projects with yeah. a low white, you know, gene or anything like that. Um, just because I, I want to have pattern to be able to work with. Right. Um, so like this, this is like yeah. perfect for me. Um, I, I'd, I'd be happy with more white just cause I think it looks cool. Um, uh, but she's got a good amount of pattern on her. So I'm, 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 I'm definitely happy with how she came out. And, uh, I had one, one of her sisters I sold to, uh, um, Ken um from primal and uh she's actually breeding for him this year this girl decided to go all food for me a little bit so she's a little behind let's see this girl's cool i need to give her a deep clean um she has not eaten in three weeks so what i do this is upside down this is all the way over to the right side typically i'm going to keep it like this if they skip food one week it goes upside down it goes to the far left Whenever they skip two weeks in a row, it goes to the middle. Skip three weeks in a row, it goes over here. Once it goes over here, they get a black tag. They need to be deep cleaned because she needs to be eating. That is a hypo redhead. Okay. 50% nice. het puzzle. So if this girl hmm. proves out het puzzle, I'm gonna be I'm gonna be real happy. I, I really like the way she's uh she's growing for me. Yeah, hypo redhead. <laughs> Yep, Charlie's working on the puzzle test, so I, I know he's 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 close on it, and he may or may not already have her shed in his pocket to the test when he's got it ready. <laughs> There's a sub little GHI. Scott GHI hypo female. Oh, yeah. That girl kind of blew up and started to build follicles real quickly. I didn't, I wasn't planning on pairing her, but she told me she wanted to, so. I put the uh, I put that black pastel exanthic yeah. on her. As a exanthic clown female. Right there. That's yeah, nice. she's a good looking one, man. She's she's kept her color really well. I mean, or not her color, I guess you could say it was exanthic, but yeah, she's she's kept those really really dark black. <laughs> Uh, this is one of the holdbacks I made this last year, and she's growing like a weed. So this is a leopard spot nose, desert ghost, 
and she proved out 100% head cryptic. Yes, Sloan, that was um, a VPI clown. Yeah, yep, VPI Xanta clown. I'll use her for True Ghost stuff, True Ghost clown. This girl, I don't know. I may end yeah, up he's doing in the something like that. He's in the True Ghost. He's in the True Ghost. Uh, we looked at her. We looked at her. Uh, this is the mom of that Exantic Pied. Um, I put the uh, uh, Pastel DG Het Pied to her. Uh, I'm just going to go try to try to make some Pieds uh, that are 100% Het DG and then test for the Het Exantic. Man, all these girls look, they want to go. <laughs> yeah, man. It's, it's, so this, this is like halfway through my season right now. I've got six ovulations, and then the rest of them are either – like between 11 and 20 or they're like right on the edge ready to go this one is cool she's going into shed um this is a chocolate and she is triple het desert ghost hypo pied so the pairing is a male chocolate triple het desert ghost hypo pied and i've got him going to her and the other girl, which is the pastel chocolate triple hat. Mm. So long, 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 long odds, but super chocolate, desert ghost, hypo pied. Why not? This is a, just a straight VPI Xanthic. And I bred the pastel puzzle, double hat, hypo pied to her. Get some double hats for me, post hat hypos and okay. post hat pied. But I really want Even the doubles. Uh, people, people uh, hate on pin clowns. I love pin clowns. I think they look cool. Me too. I don't see why. I don't see why yeah. I like eight on pin clowns. Now with this girl, I put the uh, the black pastel um, exantic het DG to her. This is a pin clown het DG. So if you take this and put Desert Ghost Exantic on it, that thing's gonna look crazy. Like, like for me, I think the uh, the Exantic mm -hmm. DG Monsoon is gonna look wild. Like that's gonna be like the ultimate like TV static snake. But the same version, but with Pin Clown, that's <laughs> gonna be kind of cool, I guess. Here's these twins, Triple Het. Uh, DG Clown Pied and her sister Triple Het DG Clown Pied. How many twins have you hatched out? Uh, that was my only set. Okay, my only one. This girl kind of blew up on me. If she, I mean, if she wants to go, I'm gonna let her go. Um, this is just a double head hypo tri stripe, but I won't be mad at, at another shot for uh. The double visual. <laughs> Other than that, man, pretty simple. Nope. Good old banana. Yeah. There's a fire. Anybody hypo. have at least one? It's a uh, that that girl has made some great stuff for me. Um, she is a insane eater. Her babies grow really, really well. <laughs> Uh, my first year breeding her, I made this girl. This is a virgin female, and she fills out this 5540. That is a uh, leopard, firefly, double head, hypo mm. clown. And I put the uh, I put that Cinny Enchi clown oh, head man. hypo to her, and she's just she's not doing anything. So I don't I don't think she's gonna go this year. We'll see. There's time left in the year. I shouldn't say that yet. Oh, I like fire. Oh, yeah. That's it, man. Let me get turned back around here. Yeah, let me bring you back down. Yeah. That's the bulk of the of the collection. Like I said, it's it's relatively small for now. Uh, oh man, but it's powerful. We got some nice stuff in there, some nice blocks. Nice blast. I can't wait to see what you do with all those combos Thanks, you're going to be making. I appreciate it. I'm, I'm definitely trying to get myself a good foundation to be able to work with for a long time.
I mean, what would you consider a, a good base if you're going to try and work a project? Uh, honestly, like, uh, like my answer is probably going to be 1. 2, 1. 1.3. Oh, for, yeah, for the amount of animals, probably like a 1.3. Um, I'd probably buy three or four females one year and then buy the male the next year because, I mean, unless you have more females for that male to go to already raised up, then I, I just I just think you save yourself a little bit of money. If the price comes down in that combo, you can maybe get something a little bit better for the same amount of money the following year if you buy your male the next year. Um, but as far as, like, building up a project, the way to start is, like, find something you think looks pretty that you want to look at every day and work at that. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Because it's like, I, Do I you think, have, like, the hypo price uh, A dream pretty, animal that you want to make? Right hey, head stuff that's not like the pretty stuff but like every time i look at that female that just a straight double head hypo tri stripe in my head i'm thinking hypo tri stripe hypo tri stripe every time i'm looking at these females that are in that project i'm visualizing the pretty end goal snake that i want to make with them mm -hmm. so well you said you wouldn't um would you do incorporate blackheads into that it's out blackhead would you consider black that's that's a dark and you can consider that uh uh like a pretty gene so if you're gonna mm -hmm. make like the perfect hypo tri strike what would you put into it code down wise the perfect hypo tri strike um exactly i i just like i i think like <laughs> like just a just a nice. So I, I said I like symmetry, right? So it's like a perfect example of a tri stripe where it's symmetrical all the way through. As a true ghost, that's like that's my pinnacle for 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 tri stripe right now. Obviously. Yeah. Um, now, if we go like the other direction, if we Amen. go like like super saturated color, because like hypos brings in like the crazy oranges. Do a super OD hypo tri stripe, like NG super OD calico and uh, calico OD lace oh, hypo yeah. tri stripe. Um, you, you know, when you do like the hypo, I love calico. Yeah. Uh, like you like the black pastel, like the black pastel NG combination with hypo, it like brings a lot of like oranges through on that with that NG black pastel allelic combination. If you do orange dream calico and uh. orange dream hypo tri stripe, yeah, I can't buy hypo tri stripe, right? <laughs> That'd be nuts. <laughs> nuts. Be nuts. Oh, when's the, uh, the next show that you'll be venting? Do you know? Uh, we only have the eight animals. Yeah. So um, um, it'll be a while. Just so it'll with, it'll uh, be a while. No one um, might be able to come out. Uh, I'm looking at doing a show probably around September. Um, ideally, I do a show September. November, January, February, and then that's it. Um, I, I may do shows here and there. Um, when I, talk, I talked about it, my, so my friend Jacob, he does, uh, it's Wrapped Up Reptiles, Jacob Folks, and uh, we've been talking about going over and doing the Gettysburg show. Um, I've, I've never been to it, but a couple of the guys that I talked to have, have talked about how, like, that show, that they, they, they enjoy that show, uh, especially that it's, like, it's, getting uh like better i guess like there's more people doing it um that's one that's not too far for me i'd be down to do that one um i'd be down to go into like like pittsburgh area i'm gonna kind of use like when i start doing shows and i have enough to warrant like taking trips to do shows i'm gonna use it as like mini vacations like i'm just gonna take long weekends even if it's a one-day show like if i go down and do like a show in like atlanta or nashville or somewhere in north carolina if i do like a like a weekend repticon or something like I'm going to make a vacation around it. I'll take the wife with me. She'll be able to like, she, she can work remotely. So half the time when she goes to shows with me, she'll stay in the hotel room, work during the day. I get done. I grab her and we go see what the city has to offer. And it's a lot easier to make trips out of that, out of these long weekends that I can center around a show that I can write off as expenses and also go take a trip. <laughs> and I'm not taking a whole week off of work because that, that's, that's tough for the both of us. I hear that. 
We're um we're going to the um uh uh rep uh, reps kind of uh, so show me we're going to a reps kind this weekend, but the following weekend we're going to Atlanta for um a show me. Nice. I've never been to a Repticon. They they don't have oh, them up by me. Yeah, oh. I mean they they don't have anywhere near Ohio. I think the closest one is Tennessee. Where I lived in Florida, I lived in Daytona. There was one like every month, like twice a month. Yeah, yeah, no shortage of shows around there. So you got a message. John, if it pops up there, if you do repricing, bring pet animals, but enjoy the trip either way. Yeah. yeah I was thinking about that. What No Rock Kim says, um, hypo black exantic. But that's super like hypo black exantic leather <laughs> leopard and black. Yeah. Oh no idea what gosh. that would even look like. No idea what that would even look dark. like. That's right. Super Cause dark. Because like the leopard tri strikes are so yeah. variable that we've seen so far. They look they look awesome, but it's like I don't. There's that's going to be so fun to play with with genes that are just like super reactive, especially in a gene like tri stripe where it tries to have like a symmetrical back pattern. We can just inject something that can turn it around. That's that's the fun in breeding, man. You can make something that you have no idea what it's going to look like. I think. I got Ken on it in two weeks. Get ready, Ken. Ken. Yeah, that's that's my homie. My homie. Yeah, Ken's a good dude. A few years. What to make the um the the black and leopard blackhead tri strike hypo? I need some black exantic, man. Like let me know when you got some of that. That's one gene. That's one of those other genes. What's that's the next exantic I want is black exantic. That black exantic stuff is crazy, but, especially <laughs> those, good, uh, good time. <laughs> yeah, man. I appreciate you having me on. Uh, so. No doubt, man. You got to come back. You got to come back or, or come out and, and hang out with us on on a Friday. Let's do it and, and have some fun with a bunch of yeah. Yeah, I, I think I'm free this Friday. If you want me to jump in, I'm I'm happy to. I'll come hang out. Oh, all right, cool. I'll drop you the link. Drop the link and jump on in, and uh, it'll be fun. A lot cool, of fun. Man. I'll tell I'll tell I'll tell um Ken to come hang out since y'all y'all cool. Ken, hang out with us on Friday. I'm dropping you the link, bro. Thank you all, everybody for kicking it with us. We appreciate it. Y'all know what to do. Get those flowers out to those people in your life that you know you'll miss if you are no longer here tomorrow. It's not promised. Oh, hold on a second. Hold on a second. I see I got my, my homies in the chat. They better see the swag I'm rapping. I'm rapping for y'all tonight, too. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah. FNA Balls. Those are my broskies right there. I right. get me off of here. So, yeah, um, get those flowers out to those people you know that you will miss if you're only here tomorrow. It's not promised. Five minutes from now, it's not promised. So, please, please, please let people know how you feel about them. You can get the fuck off my phone and call your mother right now. Tell her you love her. Peace. Thank you.